Hey, what's up? So I wanted to do a follow up to the first video I did of never using sync locks. And, you know, if there's 8 billion people in the world, there's probably 7.99999 billion people who could care less. But this was the most controversial video Avid Beer had. And I want to go over some techniques or why I still think you should never use sync locks if you want to have more free time to drink beer or wine or vodka, whiskey, anything good. So what I have here is a one hour timeline. Black parts are the spots where the commercials are supposed to be. I need to take 30 seconds out of this black. One way I could do it is with sync locks, I could probably pick any track and I could exit out and everything's going to back, come back because it's everything's in sync. It doesn't matter what tracks are connected. If I only wanted to do one track, you could delete all the sync locks down here and then sync channel two, I guess, and press X and then channel two is going to come back. So the way I'm thinking about it is almost in reverse. One of my issues with the sync locks is A, to turn it on and off, and maybe there is a keyboard shortcut, but I have to go all the way down to this very, very small box and I have to click on and off. Any individual ones I have to click. This is a very small window. Your mouse has to be in a very particular spot and to do multiple ones, et cetera, et cetera. So for me, the idea of, of getting rid of this 30 seconds in, when my sync locks are off is all about control A and control shift A. With control A, everything is in sync and I'll hit X and I'll, everything will come back like that. If I only wanted to do channel two, I can hit control shift A, two, and now channel two is moving back. Same thing with loading filler. If I wanna move everything forward and load filler here, let's do 30 frames, excuse me, 30 seconds. I'm gonna hit it again, control A, now everything is in sync. I'm gonna hit V and everything move forward 30 seconds. And the same thing, if I only wanted to do channel two, hit control shift A, hit two, V, now that, that happened. So the one issue is going to be, well, of course, that's easy because I'm moving all of the tracks at the same time. What am I going to do when I go into, let's say this graphic right here on channel V3 and V4, and I don't want to move everything else down? Great question. Good point. One thing before I get to that, I want to just show you the control three. If I hit control three on the command palette in other is this button called focus. If you work on long sequences, you should definitely have this as a keyboard shortcut. I work on promos. So imagine you have your hour timeline here and you wanted to just go and look at something. And I have this focus button. I just put it right here focus, it goes right in there and comes come right back out. It actually, as imagine as a keyboard shortcut, this is tremendous. So that was an aside. But the idea is, let's say I the producer or someone said, I need to move this graphic 10 frames back. Now, of course, the idea of me moving this 10 frames back by Xing everything out would move everything down the line 10 frames back. Impossible. Can't be done. So one thing to think about is the long way to do it would probably be get this segment mode, shift click on it, and then move it or drag it 10 frames. But the way I would do it, and again, I have a video on this called copy into source monitor. Again, this is all with my left hand. I wish I had my little camera set up today, but I, I didn't and it's too late now. But I would hit control alt C, control alt C copies and pastes this information into your source monitor. And then I would go back 10 frames, cut it in and get rid of lop off this little extra 10 frames that was left on the end. And now this one part has moved forward and everything else has stayed the same. Yes. So there's many a times where I want to adjust something in a sequence. If I just need to move V2 and V1, I cannot do this idea of control A, control shift A. I need to copy source paste into the monitor. And I'll do that right now. So now that's in the monitor. Let me lift it out. Let me move it forward 10 frames. And again, now I'm editing in that in that section right there. And there's my little 10 frame hole, which I can extend back and forth. So to me, the idea of sync locks, yes, 
you know, somebody saying, make this uh, commercial break an extra three minutes long. And I put it in, and I put in three minutes and then said, no, we were by mistake. We only wanted it to be one minute. And then I just control a hit X and now everything's going. I remember and looking at what I'm doing here. I'm not hitting anything to do with this tiny little button. That's the whole point of it. It just saves a lot of time. But correctly, you're right. If you need to move something in within a shot now, that's right. Even this shot right here. If I need to adjust within this shot, slipping and sliding, whatever, moving it back 10 frames, I'm going to be doing that using Control Alt C into the monitor and then extending where I need to go. Um, same thing if I needed to move it forward. I could do it that way. And using the extend key to trim as needed. So again, I really hope this video makes you think about ways to edit without using sync locks. It will save you time to drink more beer. And really, isn't that what really life's all about? And go to avidbeer.com if you want to learn Avid in 180 short five-minute videos just like this. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.